Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. What's going on, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today as I talk about the top 10 best DC Omnis for new readers. So, join me! And welcome back, everybody. So this is a video that I've been asked to do for the last couple of years because I did a video almost to the day three years ago of my top 10 best DC Omnis for new readers. I did one for Marvel. This isn't my favorite Omnis. It's a list of Omnis that I think will introduce these particular characters in the world of DC to new readers. And if you want to go and check out the original video, I'll leave the link above and it's on the playlist on, under Beginner's Guide and Omnibus Reviews, I think. But today I wanted to go and take a look at books that are still in print. So that's the rule. These books have to be in print as of this video. And a lot of books have come out in the recent years, like in the last three years. Uh, not only that, but we've also had some reprints. As a matter of fact, I think there's a book in here that I mentioned in my first video that was not in print and I didn't or I couldn't justify putting it on the list originally so i am adding it to the list this time around there could be a couple maybe of books that i had already talked about in the original list I never really go back and watch my old videos but maybe if you do you can compare and contrast regardless here's the list as of 2023 in august and as always thank you so much to our patrons could not be doing videos like this without you all and if you want to check out our patreon the link is in the description of the video as well as the link to our spread shop great ways to support the channel smash that like button please that is a very small thing you can do for us and it goes a long way now let's go ahead and start in no particular order with the flash by mark wade omnibus volume one this to me is what really sets up the character of the flash for the dc universe the flash has always been this central focal point in every one of the dc crossovers whether it's crisis on infinite earths or whether it's flashpoint he's always at the center and i feel like part of the reason why so many writers focus on him is because of mark wade's run on flash and right off the bat here you start with a couple of issues that kind of set the path for born to run which is considered pretty much flash year one it's his origin story it's how wally west became the flash and that is the uh, important thing to note too that we are talking about wally west flash i believe i think in my first video i had to have uh said that flash by jeff johns the great introduction and, and that still holds true but i feel like the mythos the greatness of what was the flash really happened in this particular run he's joined by artists like mike waringo and greg laroque carmine infantino coming back so you get a little classic artwork in there travis charay and also william messer Loeb's co-writing some of the stuff in here and brian augustine but it is mark way that makes you care about this character and i always tell people if you're not digging the book by the time you get to the life of or the return of barry allen it may not be for you and oh my gosh that line still hits you're no Barry Allen each and every time. So this is a phenomenal introduction to not just the character, but also a couple of other DC characters that show up in this run. JLA by Grant Morrison Omnibus. This is everything that Grant Morrison did in the pages of JLA whenever they relaunched it in the mid 90s. And in here you get to find out about the characters like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, but also introduces you to lesser known characters that hadn't been a around in a while at DC, like Big Barda and Orion joining the team. You have a literal angel joining the team. Martian Manhunter comes back. Um, you During this time, my favorite Green Lantern is part of the Justice League, and that is Kyle Rayner. But what Grant Morrison and, and Howard Porter do so well is reintroduce these classic characters with 
the biggest threats thrown at them from not just here on Earth, but also intergalactic. Anywhere from Rock of Ages to World War III, this particular run delivers, and it does it in an awesome style. And I know the 90s gets a lot of heat for being bad art or horrible storytelling. There are a lot of amazing stories during the 90s that just for some reason people overlook or just put them under the same category as trash and i never understood that but this right here will make you care about blue superman that's right superman wasn't even wearing his tights and a cape he was blue lightning blue during this time regardless still a wonderful introduction to the character wally west flash i think morrison really understood the character as well as mark wade and this right here is a wonderful introduction to the Justice League. And no matter what incarnation, this one was a little hard because I was like, well, what about New 52? But New 52 had, had a couple of issues. But I think this here introduces you to the team, the characters, and the overall DC universe. And it does a wonderful job of doing that for new readers. Batman by Paul Dini Omnibus. This one here is a great introduction for people that liked the Batman animated series, mainly because it's Paul Dini writing these stories. But the beauty of the stories that are collected in this omnibus is that they are one and done stories, meaning that it doesn't continue into another issue and you have to keep reading them. You can digest them in one or two issue story arcs. And there are a couple of two issue story arcs where it does continue into another issue. But the very beginning is like one offs and that's it. And I love that about this. He's joined by Dustin Wynn. And you'll even have some classic artists in here like Neil Adams, Don Kramer. Uh, you have Alex Ross doing some of the artworks, J.H. Williams III. And it's just a phenomenal introduction to the character. There is one of the crossovers in here. The resurrection of a certain character. I don't want to spoil who that is. Um, but I, I feel like with crossovers like that, it makes you want to expand your knowledge of the Batman universe. and makes you want to go and read Batman by Grant Morrison. And I thought about adding Batman by Grant Morrison because I think the first time I did this, it was Batman by Greg Capullo and by Scott Snyder. But this time around, I think this is a better introduction and there's a wonderful story arc in here, The Heart of Hush, that just delivers, and it's a page-turner. And then the whole relationship between the Bat and the Cat, right? Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. So, great jumping on point for anybody that has ever wanted to check out Batman. This is the one that I recommend. Animal Man by Grant Morrison. This is the one that I was talking about that was out of print whenever I did my first video three years ago, and I think I recommended Doom Patrol, which I still do. It's an excellent, but I think that one is now out of print. This one just came back to print last year, and is still in print as of this video, and this is such a wonderful story. This is the second Grant Morrison book I have in here, but it rightly belongs on this list. It is the story of Buddy Baker, a C-list character at DC Comics. He's the animal man. He has the power of animals. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say, oh man, that is so lame. But oh my gosh, there is so much more to it than that. This goes deep into what exactly is a comic book. Whenever you're reading this, it feels like you're experiencing something completely different, that it, it's not just a comic book, that comic books can be more than just the pictures on the the paper that it's it's hitting you hard it's hitting you close to your soul and it opened my eyes as to the unlimited power of what this medium can bring there is the coyote gospel story in here it's very meta and self-aware and when you get to the end you're going to be scratching your head going did i just read this or did i experience this and i totally recommend it for anybody that has even, not even picked up a comic book it is a freaking amazing experience and i'm so glad that dc decided to bring it back to print it was under the vertigo label but now it's under the black label line gotham central by ed Baker and greg rucka i believe this was in my top 10 favorite omnibus of all time and it, it still is in, in there whether it's marvel or dc or dark horse idw doesn't matter this will always be in there. It's it's wonderful. It's hard to knock this one off the list. Uh, artwork in here by Michael Lark, Stefano Guadino, Kano doing some artwork. Not the guy from Mortal Kombat. A amazing artist. But 
This is a great introduction to the world of DC Comics through a detective noir story. Because that's what it is. You're reading about the Gotham Police Department, about the night shift and day shift. So Ed Brubaker handles one shift, Greg Rucka handles the other shift. And it's about the true crime stories that are going on in Gotham City. So imagine being a team of homicide police detectives and finding the remains of somebody that got frozen by Mr. Freeze. And you got to figure out... What exactly what the cause of death was? Was it really that they were frozen to death? Now, you're probably asking, wait, does Batman show up in this? Absolutely, but he doesn't take the spotlight. He doesn't take away from the story. It's about the detectives. Now, you may know some if you've watched the animated series like Rene Montoya, or you've read other DC works like Superman. Maggie Zoyer shows up in here. Uh, there's a lot of detectives in here, and even though it's this little tiny corner of the DC universe... Um, you still get a bigger, broader understanding of the DC Universe through here, through the eyes of normal folks that are just living day to day. And there's a story in here called Dead Robin. That's where Batman comes in, of course, when there's a kid that's dressed up as Robin and he's found dead. And it even ties into Infinite Crisis. So kind of showing you that even though it's in this tiny little corner of the DC Universe, it's still a big part of the DC Universe. Now, before I continue with my list... Here's a quick word from our sponsor. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions. In Europe, ding! Infinite Crisis Omnibus. Remember when I said that Gotham Central even ties into Infinite Crisis? This event was so important and crucial to the DC Universe. And I feel like even though it's a little complex for new readers, the miniseries that lead into the main event that's collected in this big massive omnibus can help you understand the broader DC Universe, the villains, the heroes, the magic, the rules for magic, and it's just an amazing story. It's my favorite event, and my first DC comic was Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's all, it's It was like number seven, so that to me always has a special place in my heart. I was so confused, but I feel like with this, there is going to be a little bit of confusion, but honestly, Jeff Johns just does an amazing job. And he's not alone. Jeff Johns is joined by Gail Simone and Bill Willingham in here, Greg Rucka, to tell the stories that lead into Infinite Crisis. What exactly is going on? What do the villains have planned for the heroes? And who is really pulling the strings? Who is behind all this? And oh my gosh, there's some beautiful artwork in here by Phil Jimenez and also Ivan Reyes, just to name a few of the artists that worked on this book. It is, to me, one of the best superhero stories at DC, the by far the best DC event. And I feel like people new to comics or new to omnibus collections would benefit from something like this. And it's also mapped to perfection where they have the miniseries, where they have the one-shots, and, you know, everything in between. The important major things that you need to read in between the event issues. Oh, I can't praise this book enough. It's been printed four times. You may see a different cover. This is the Jim Lee cover. I believe there's a Phil Jimenez cover as well. But whatever the latest printing is, go and get it. You will not be disappointed. Wonder Woman by George Pettis, Omnibus, Volume 1. So I say Volume 1, there is a continuation. It does go into two more Omnis and then War of the Gods, if you're interested in that big event. But what this is, is a beautiful introduction to the character of Diana from Themyscira, Wonder Woman, and how she came to man's world. And I feel like George Perez was given this title, I think he was only supposed to be on it for six issues, but he stayed on it for a long time. She's joined by Greg Potter and Len Wein. Artwork in here by... George Perez, but also Arthur Adams, Brian Boland, just to name a few of the artists. And oh my gosh, this story is so wonderful and it's so beautifully drawn. And it's a great introduction to the character. And it slowly introduces you to other DC characters too, like Superman shows up in here. And there's a legend story that also has Batman in here. But in here, I believe this is the most 
you know, it's not the only origin story for Wonder Woman. I mean, it's Golden Age, Silver Age, the New 52, the Rebirth Era. They all have their origin stories. But I believe this is the one that really just encompasses what makes Wonder Woman so beautiful. Not physically, but what makes her so beautiful in the eyes of everyone that comes to know her. And you get to see it through the eyes of a lot of the strangers that she meets. Not just Steve Trevor, but other people that she meets through here. I absolutely adore this run. It is amazing that he was able to show that just within six issues, right? That the, the how naive she is, how innocent she is, yet how badass of a warrior she is. I could not recommend this run enough, and I'm glad that it's back to print. It just came back to print, I believe, early this year, if I'm not mistaken. But Wonder Woman by George Perez Omnibus absolutely belongs on this list. JSA Omnibus Volume 1. I'm pretty damn sure that this one was on the list the first time I did this three years ago, just because I love this. This is my favorite DC superhero comic of all time. And it's about a bunch of old guys, but don't you dare call them old. So this is mainly Jeff Johns. However, it starts off with James Robinson and David Goyer. The David Goyer, of course, the gentleman that went to write The Dark Knight and Batman Begins. But this is before that. This is a reintroduction of these Golden Age characters. So if you ever had any curiosity about checking out the Golden Age stories, there's a couple ways to do that, right? You could go to the, some Golden Age comics and check them out yourself. They have omnis of those and they also have archives that are out of print, but they are out there. Or you can check out some modern runs that do have those characters showing up, whether it's Sandman Mystery Theater or Starman or something like this. The way that Jeff Johns writes comics, though, is th there's a word for nostalgia for a time that you weren't alive in. It's, what is it? Anim Animoia. And that's the way he writes characters. That even though I wasn't around in the 40s and 50s, it feels like I envy that and I want to be a part of that. That simpler time, if that makes sense. And I absolutely love that about his writing. He makes you care about these characters, whether it's Jay Garrick, Flash, or the original Wesley Dodd Sandman, or Our Man, or uh, Dr. Midnight, or new characters too, because there are legacy characters that show up through here with Stargirl, and a new Our Man, and Android Our Man. And you have Captain Marvel, Shazam, for the people that watch the movies. Uh, that character showing up, and it's just such a wonderful story. And... Carlos Pacheco, Jesus Merino, Darwin Cook, and Tim Sell, Eduardo Rizzo, just some of the artists that worked on this big, massive book. It starts off with a bunch of little mini-series, so you kind of get to know the characters and their Golden Age stories, so stories that took place in like the 40s and the late 30s and the 50s, and then slowly you're reintroduced to these characters, now a lot older. And even though there are tie-ins in here to something like Zero Hour, you still feel like you are understanding things that are going on that you're not supposed to. And that's just the way that Jeff Johns writes. I absolutely recommend that there's magical moments in here. There's spiritual journeys and Mr. Terrific became one of my favorite characters in DC because of this run. So absolutely recommend it. It is new reader friendly for sure. And volume two just came back to print last year. So now all three are in print as of this video. Now we're going to talk about Sandman Omnibus Volume 1. There is a total of three of these that collect every single thing from Neil Gaiman's Sandman world. From the original one. There's a classic line and then there's the new Sandman universe. But I'm talking about the very classic one that premiered through Vertigo Comics. And now I believe they're being printed under the Black Label line. This is a wonderful introduction to the mystical, dreamy side of the DC Universe. You're going to be seeing a lot of superheroes towards the first 10 issues, and then it just becomes its own thing. If you're a fan of the Netflix series, and you want to check out some DC comics, the original stuff that the TV show is based on, this is where to go. You have wonderful artwork in here from Malcolm Jones, and Chris Bocciolo, Sam Keith, Kelly Jones and Colleen Doran, Matt Wagner, just to name a few of the collaborators that went on this journey with Neil Gaiman. It is the story of Dream and the Endless. And oh my gosh, it is a wonderful ride. 
And if you enjoy the TV show, the comics are even better. There's a lot of horror elements in here, sci-fi, beautiful fantasy, and it's one of those other books, kind of like what I said about Grant Morrison's Animal Man. It's definitely an experience and should not be missed by anyone. And that's why I am putting it on this list. Last, but absolutely certainly not least, is Superman by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason Omnibus. This is the rebirth era of Superman, but it's a old Superman that we knew about. So the classic Superman is back. He had a beard. I wish he hadn't shaved it off, but wait a minute. That's what people say about my beard. Huh. So that's what it feels like. No, I'm not comparing myself to Superman. Uh, so it is a different Superman, though, because now he is playing the role of father. He's married to Lois Lane. Uh, it's a new status quo for him. And as a reader, it's a new status quo for all of us. Even if you've been reading Superman for 50 years, it's a new status quo. You get a family man now. You get a man that has to put his wife and kid above anything else while still trying to save another galaxy when he hears the cries for help. Oh my gosh, the stories in here, like, as of, I think, and I don't even want to say it's because I'm a father. I think they would still hit despite of, you know, having two little girls now. They're just wonderfully written, and it's another side of Superman that you get to see. And through this world, you get to be introduced to other DC characters like Batman and Robin. Oh my gosh, when Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne get together, that becomes its own little Super Sons, and you can check that out. See, you'll want to keep reading these stories, and you'll want to keep reading about uh, the character of Superman to continue on. And I think that's what makes this such a wonderful jumping on point for new readers for the world of DC and Superman because Superman is where it all began for DC Comics and I think that's why I saved this one for last. Uh, Jorge Jimenez doing some of the artwork in here as well as Doug Mankey joining Patrick Gleason and a few others but 100% this one here if you haven't read it and you haven't read any Superman and I do videos on where to start reading characters I know I put this on the list but this definitely is the omnibus for you. Now, if you're interested in purchasing these books I talked about on this list and you live in America, check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you mentees. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my list for the top 10 DC Omnis for new readers. Let me know if the original list helped you get started on your DC journey. Uh, if you would add or take away anything from this list, if any of these books that you've read and you were like, eh, not really for me, uh, but let me know. And I would love to also know if any of these books do help you start on your journey with DC Comics. Leave all those comments down below, questions down below. Let me know what your list would be too. Leave all of that down below. And check out our Patreon and Spreadshop, amazing ways to support the channel. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. Cannot be making videos like this without you all. Everyone, stay healthy and safe. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'll be doing a list of my favorite DC Omnis that's different than this. And also my suggestion for Marvel Omnis that are in print. It's been three years since I made that video as well. Much love.